every single room in this uh, space has multi-functions. And, and not only that, there's a different lighting configuration to every one. There's a, there's a way to change the colors of the lights behind here uh, to, to blue even, and to, to different ones, the, the lights on the floor. Every one of these lights, these grates can change out and these ceiling lights change out. Um, every single set serves multiple purposes. Well, a lot of things happen in our show uh, in season two, but I'd say the, I'd say the biggest thing that we, uh, that we find out is, is the importance of Destiny's mission. And, and the importance that, uh, that we be there on the ship to help achieve that mission. There are repercussions on Earth from actions that, that, uh, that, we, uh, that happen aboard Destiny. There are genuine, serious repercussions on Earth, but uh, there's a bigger picture too. See that thing above your head? It's very secure, you don't have to worry about it. It's the bottom of the apple core. That thing that is in the middle of the control <laughs> interface room that we dubbed the Apple Core on day one. Uh, we bring in the consoles around here, and then this becomes the control interface room. In Atlantis, for example, we would have blown a giant hole in the wall and, and thought, well, should we keep that? And, and, and realize, no, we, we have resources and we could probably repair it. But with Destiny, we, because we're so close to the bone in terms of survival, um, it's, you know, we don't have time to go and, 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 re and repair every scratch and fix every hole and, and that kind of thing because uh, it's all about staying alive. It also becomes the chair room. Uh, uh, the, uh, the chair sits right here. The, the light comes straight down through there, through the middle of the, uh, actually we move this and the light comes down the middle of where the chair sits. And then there's wall plugs that go in each of these spaces with consoles and, and that light up. The code that we've been trying to break all last season to control the ship gets discovered fairly early on in uh, in the season and uh, and it's discovered by Rush and he keeps it to himself for a little while. So this is uh, Eli's quarters but it's in its, in its cleaned up state right now. You can come in a little bit. Uh, I'll, I ask for usually a Kino in here for people. <laughs> This is the Keno dispenser. <laughs> the amount of Kinos that uh, come in a Keno dispenser is infinite. Uh, they would never run out. And uh, this is also uh, where Eli's quarters are. He usually has his pictures taped up like that, but right now it's quite pristine. Robert Nepper um, was one of the soldiers who came aboard the ship um, in the original attack, although we didn't really discover him in a, as a character until um, the beginning of, of this season. Yeah, he's a bad guy, and his arc is a very is a very huge part of the first uh, uh, seven episodes of the season two. So I can take it that some members of the Lucian Alliance are going to survive the season premiere. Uh, I, I I guess I just gave that away. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he is a member of the Lucian Alliance. One of the uh, people who came with the Lucian Alliance happens to be a rather lovely woman, and uh, and Eli. And she uh, have a little bit of a thing, and uh, and it's cool. And and she's a lovely actress. And uh, and he he needed to move on from Chloe a little bit. And uh, uh, but all you know, Eli is always going to be Eli, and he's always going to uh, be the you know the 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 audience character, the character that represents you know the 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 folks who are watching the show in the here and now. This is also the holding room. It's been the holding room several times. And uh, this is where we keep our food storage. So uh, this goes away, and we just fill it full of crates, and this is where we store. Uh, we've really worked to, to give everybody their moment uh, and, and to pay attention to everybody's arc. I mean, obviously, uh, TJ's uh, got issues with, uh, with uh, the end of last season with uh, uh, being shot and being pregnant. Um, that, that's an important thing that we follow up. Um, Ray, though, is very much a part of that mix, and her her role is expanded uh, in terms of her role on the ship this this year. Greer's role is expanded, and, and boy, he's good. He's really not that I'm surprised at all. He's a terrific actor, but but he's carrying he's he's carrying a, a ton of uh, drama uh, and really powerful scenes. And I think people who are uh, Greer fans are going to be really really uh, rewarded. We only had a piece of it, a very tiny piece of the rail when we started because we didn't think we'd use it that much, but we love this, this space and 
and because our vision effects department is uh, able to do FTL in-house, we, we quite often shoot in here and bring, bring the green screen around. And, and of course, we also have to put the glass in on the other side of this railing. I think that Telford, because he's got such an interesting story, he's the guy who was supposed to go uh, to begin with. He, he uh, ultimately ended up being the author of, of uh, sending us all here because he was the mole. His journey is, is kind of one of redemption, but so is Young's, so they, uh, they have to deal with that together. This uh, space also serves as the crew quarters. What happens is this wall plane comes down. You see there's big pulleys up there. This becomes a wall right here. Well, it's actually a little further in. And, and uh, this becomes plugs that have one, two, three windows, and that's what the, the, the star field is for. There's just chunks of mirror glutes and velvet. But it's very effective. These doors are all motorized, uh, so we hit a button, this thing rapidly turns. And then two grips, or <laughs> one grip pulls them open like that. They're all on rails, so it's fairly quick. We definitely have more aliens coming, more uh, interesting, uh, entirely computer-generated, truly alien aliens coming up uh, all through the season, uh, uh, but mainly being introduced uh, in the third episode, um, and they're amazing. I'm telling you, what, what these guys can do in terms of uh, creating uh, living, breathing CG creatures is just astounding me. But... When we change the configuration by lifting up the walls, and it works, it works on uh, on this side. You know, you get a window, you get a piece of machinery that wasn't there before. It changes the uh, lighting configuration as well. So one corridor becomes two, changes the lighting becomes three. There's a lot going on in terms of uh, of, of aliens and and external forces. It's not it's not uh, it's not quite as much. Uh, the internal strife that we experienced at the beginning of season one, where these folks were just trying to figure out who they are and where they were. Uh, now they're going forward in a more um, having to band together sort of way, uh, if that's a sentence. And, uh, and they're kind of forcing themselves to, to make it work. The mission 